Yurok been fishing the rivers since the beginning of time. We've been fishing all up and long down the river and on the coast even and in all the villages above. Pulakla, and the Pulakla is a downriver people. That's where my people come from on the Klamath River. The river does so much for us. It not only brings us our food, it brings us everything we need. We're at Rekwa, at the south side of the Klamath River, where the river meets the ocean. And that's what Rekwa means. It's where it goes into the ocean. It's the mouth, this is where it all starts. This is where everything comes in, where everything goes out. So it's a circle of life down here. I'm gonna do a drift net, just a basic 30-foot drift net, throw net. You can throw it off the beach and let it drift down and hope something hits it. The Yurok and the other tribes used dip nets, trigger nets, but as they had a catch to eat, so they got really good at it. They dip netted here. Still to this day, we still dip net. We have a self-implemented closure just to let, you know, the river have a break as we're supposed to have a real low salmon year this year. Rules will change based on the conditions of what we're in. Like if it's, you know, real low year, we don't have much fish, we're gonna try to conserve. And if there's a lot of fish and there's too many fish, you know, we're gonna harvest. As long as we are here, there has to be salmon. I could not imagine not having any salmon. It's, a, it's our way of life. It brings us together. It provides healthy food, happiness, sadness, uh, great occasions. We're almost ready. A little bit of sea salt, not too heavy, but we're ready to put these on. You want to start putting them in? Sure. Get them underway. Not very many people say that you go catch their dinner and plan their dinners on what you catch. It not only saves us money, it actually is good for us, you know? It's what we were supposed to eat, what we we're supposed to always eat. Our main food 100 years ago was acorns, eels, deer meat, and fish. And that was it. So we'll go like 10 minutes each side, be done. And the sticks will actually heat up really hot right here. Anthony Bourdain should be here trying this. <laughs> and then right off the stick. There's nothing better. Try a piece. <laughs> the salmon is as essential to the Yurok people as the air they breathe. In the 1930s, the state of California asserted its jurisdiction on the river and closed the river for Indian gillnet fishing. That didn't prohibit my family, who believed that we have that right to fish, that inherent right to fish. And so my uncles kept fishing, but they fished at night. And they continued to fish. And eventually, they did get caught. And that resulted in the Supreme Court case that reaffirmed our rights in 1976. I started that when I was 12 years old, with me and my brother. We was fishing, and uh, they were chasing us around every night. We'd go up the river and fish, and we'd come down and just had them all confused, you know. But my brother says, I'm tired of this. I said, I am too. The game wardens came up that day and picked our nets up. So we were sitting there, and they says, well, whose nets was they? And everybody looked at us. Nobody wanted to claim them. And I said, well, I ain't going to look my net gone. And I said, I claim all five of them. The theme of the day here was can an Indian and save a salmon. And so there was a lot of animosity because we, there were a lot of fishermen that were here on the river. And so when we started to fish with nets, they were very unhappy because they had claimed ownership to the river at that point. 
because he was the one who took that court case. He was a target. So they would stop him all the time. He had his family in this, and they came in the middle of the night, and they woke him up and got them all out of bed with their guns because they wanted to find fish at his house. You know, I mean, just the things that he's had to go through in his family because he stood up for our fishing rights, it's not OK. They didn't think something like the Salmon Wars could happen and nobody ever hear about it. It didn't seem right, it didn't seem fair. So we have 78 and we have 79. Something happened every day. It was constant, whether it was upriver, whether it was downriver. We're hearing the stories. At this point, we're frightened. We're afraid to ride in our cars alone. Whenever we plan a trip to the store, more than one person has to go. We're frightened. We're just scared all of the time. There was an elderly gentleman who had a birthday, and we took some time off from protesting, and we had salmon on the sticks down there. We had a nice fire. He would brought his drum. There was probably an even seven children, seven women, seven men kind of group that was together. And he was singing, he had a beautiful singing voice. And right in the middle of the singing, this big flash came out the top of the mountain, up the top of the hill up here. Because of that big flash, which was not normal, we knew something was gonna happen. As soon as that happened, the cars headed on down the road. At the point that they stopped, little flashlights came on. There was over 200 little flashlights. When they hit the sandbar where we're at, they stop and then they pull off their billy clubs. This is all they're doing and coming towards us. So you're thinking in your head, I'm going to die. We're all going to die. We're all going to die right here and nobody will ever know the truth about the story. When they stopped, their boat started up in the river that we did not know were there. So we were surrounded. The elderly gentleman started drumming and he started singing and we all sang. We all sang and we didn't know the song, but we all knew it all of a sudden. The children sang, everyone sang the song. It got louder and louder, and then they said, let's get the hell out of here. There was a fear of our spirituality, so they left. But what happened when they left, people had wet their pants, people had thrown up. You know, we were left, we were frightened. We were left frightened. Yes, they left us. When we walked from the beach, they took from us something that we never got back. As far as healing, how can you heal Indian country and tell you, tell the truth? And maybe that's our responsibility. The story still has to be told. It didn't just happen, it's still happening. 78 and 79 for us, but look at other tribes who are still struggling. Look at us struggling over our river. That's today. You know, that is not your ancestors. This is today what's going on here. When we had the fish kill, we immediately closed our fishery because that was a sign that was a terrible imbalance in the world. And so we didn't fish, but everyone else still fished. There were thousands of dead salmon, a 12 to 15 pound salmon laying on the banks of the river, floating down the river, and they were still fishing. So senseless over a decision of the government to provide water to the farmers and not to the resource in a year where the water flows were so low and the temperatures so high. So the tribe presented data and science to say, you have got to provide what water is there to the resource to protect the fish, and they chose not to. And as a result, we had 70 to 80,000 dead Chinook salmon. We have a lot of threatened species on the Klamath now, and we have already lost species in the Klamath. And to me, that's not acceptable in this day and time. Marijuana industry has been here forever. When I came down here, that was one of the things that the Yurok tribe was very adamant about, was dealing with the marijuana and the drugs in general. We want to eradicate it because it takes a lot of water, and it's water that the fish need. Just for instance, up there in the Witchpeck area, the water temperature in the river during August 
was 79 degrees, 77 to 79 degrees, and nothing can live in 77 to 79 degrees. And the fish were dying, they were getting parasites. And up in the marijuana, which is a mile up the hill, every marijuana grower almost has a large pond that they build. It gathers the water and then it's dispersed out of there to the garden. Those ponds, every one of them we tested was 58 to 60 degrees. That's water that should be on its way to the river and keeping the fish cool, not in a big pond up there that's feeding marijuana plants. This area hasn't seen fire in over 100 years, and it should have burned annually. Part of the practice of burning this mountain would be to help to call the salmon up the river. I consider you know, fire to be the equivalent of food for our food. It's like if we don't have fire, we don't have food for our food. It's said that the smoke carries the prayers, but the fire answers them. And so part of that smoke going up would shade the river and it would cool the water temperature. And so these practices, though they're conveyed through oral histories as maybe the form of a myth or a story, they actually have practical ecological purposes. The Klamath River is a lifeblood of our system. Fire is the primary force management tool. Our ceremonies are based on these relationships. Our worldview is dependent upon these relationships. And now we're in a point in time where traditional knowledge is allowing Western science to understand the physical dilemma that the landscape is in. A lot of this is all of our family fishing holes. The creek's flowing over there and it comes up out of the ground right there and it just creates this beautiful pool that kind of, it's a little sanctuary for any kind of fish that's in the river system or a baby fish that's hanging out before he heads to the ocean. This is a vital spot right here for the river because it not only cools down the river, it helps the fish that stop here and rest because the river's so hot. They come from the ocean and, you know, it's cold and they get up on the river and the river's kind of sick from being so hot and people taking water out of the river and the drought and everything just accumulate. And this spot kind of helps them out a little bit. It's like a pit stop for them, you know? They kind of get recharged. The dams will block most of all the fish that come up. I'm very concerned. There's um, water conditions, ocean conditions. Uh, right now, in this last couple of years, been very noticeable is a lot of juvenile salmon have been dying before they can go ahead and get back to the ocean to regenerate. Well, the dams creates all this toxic algae, and you got all the runoffs from all the farmers, and you got the insects, pesticides, insecticides. I was warned by this in 1977 by A.U. Rock Madison Man. He's seen in the future. He said, you're going to go back to Blue Creek. I knew your grandfather. He said, you're going to lead our people, and we're going to protect our river. The last thing he said to me, don't ever let them dam our river. You have to take care of our river. So I'm the protector of a river. That's why I'm here. We've been working for a number of years to remove dams on the main stem of the Klamath River. With dam removal comes the possibility of re-establishing runs of spring chinook once again into the entire basin. The Yurok people are always the first to come to the table and the last to leave the table because we can't afford not to be there to protect our resource because it's our responsibility that we ensure that the resources we have are better than how we receive them for tomorrow's generation. Fishing is who we are. We're fishing people. So the health of that river and its resources is the health of our people. And so if the river's sick, the people are going to be sick because our ceremonies, everything, our spirituality, our strength and health is all connected to the river. We're all one. Salmon's looked at more than anything. You know, they feed us and they feed me and they take care of my family, the fish. 
I always tell my kids, you know, thank the river for this because that's everything I got is because of the river, everything I own. <laughs> a little tiny presentation of bait. I think that's good. Okay. And don't, you don't want to reel it up so far. Okay. Okay. I feel privileged to be out on the water. I, uh, I'm actually the only Yurok travel guide on the entire river. My goal is to catch you fish, but my main goal is hold, to make hold, you a better hold, fisherman. Hold them right. Thank you. 